Welcome to the Bible for today, our Advent study. Uh, we're looking at Messianic prophecies from Hebrew Scripture today from the third chapter of Malachi. We read this, See, I will send my messenger, who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant, whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have people who will bring offerings in righteousness. I remember years ago a lovely and very funny couple in a church I was serving then who told me about their marriage, uh, the journey, the good times, and the challenges. I remarked to the wife, well, you did promise for better or worse, and she answered with her husband sitting there, so when does the better part start? He replied by saying, Martha, you wanted to get married as much as I did just goes to show that a person always needs to be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. They were a lovely couple and in love and just teasing each other, but his statement is nonetheless true. Sometimes we should be careful what we wish for because we just might get it. Malachi wrote to a people far different than Isaiah, for instance, whose beautiful words we considered last week. Uh, Malachi wrote many years later to people who were not oppressed and held captive by Babylon. Instead, they lived under the benevolent rule of Persia, who let them do pretty much whatever they pleased. They were back home in Israel, their world was at peace, they were prosperous, life was good in almost every way. And so in the words of William Barclay, they had become apathetic and lethargic. Uh, when they talked about the arrival of a Messiah, it was all pretty much cerebral, just faith talk, no sense of urgency. And at best, they assumed all a Messiah would do was just tell them how wonderful they were, and they already knew that. So Malachi wrote, But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire. Still hoping for a Messiah to come, are you, Jerusalem, he asked? Well, be careful what you wish for. Because when he comes to this wicked generation, it will be to cleanse, to put you through the fire, to refine you and make you pure. Okay, let's move all this forward about 2,400 years and ask the question, what does the scripture lesson have to say to us? I received a Christmas e-card recently that said, he came to Bethlehem long ago. Wouldn't it be wonderful if he came to our town too? The Sunday morning side of me said, ah, yes, to have Jesus come to our town. What a pretty thought. But the other side of me, the honest side, the realist side said, how happy would any of us be if he really did show up? I mean, that's a legitimate question. Be honest, at least with yourself. How happy would you be if Jesus actually showed up tomorrow morning, if he decided to move into your house or into your office or to attend your next holiday party or to listen in on your phone calls or read your emails or even to attend the next meeting of your church committee. Sure, in December, it's easy to talk about how sweet it would be to have the baby Jesus arrive in a little manger in our world. But who do you know who really means that? Because Jesus doesn't come to our world as a sweet little baby. Instead, he comes as a full-grown Messiah who calls us to live life differently than we have before, to set aside hostility, to express love even to those who make loving difficult, to watch and weigh our words so that they are free of bigotry and judgment, to give and sacrifice and share and forgive, and stand up and speak out and step forward for justice and mercy for all people, for all people. 
Who can endure the day of his coming? asked Malachi. Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire. Think about these two questions. First, what would Jesus see if he visited you tomorrow? Would he be pleased or disappointed? Second, what would Jesus ask of us if he visited tomorrow? And would we be comfortable with whatever that is? See you next week.